Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. So I've received a commission to make a kind of rustic industrial style coffee table and that's why I got these old scaffold boards a few months ago. Now they're different to normal scaffold boards, they're nearly twice as thick so they're going to make a really good chunky looking table. I got the boards taken into the workshop and these end metal straps need taking off so I've got them removed with a pry bar and all the nails taken out. I'm going to start by roughly getting them cut to length with the jigsaw so I mark out how long I want them to be. I move my trolley into place to give the board a bit of extra support then I can get them put onto it and cut down with the jigsaw. I use the planer to flatten one surface and one edge and with that done I can reconfigure the machine into thickness and mode and get the boards passed through it. With all the boards squared up, I can now get them cut to their final length. They're much more manageable after that initial cutting down with the jigsaw. I get a clean edge put on one end, then I can get a stop set up on the mitre gauge and the other pieces cut. To get the size of the table I want, I want two and a half boards joined together. So I need to get one board ripped in half. I'm going to join these together with biscuits. So I get them pushed together and then I put a triangle on them so I can get them in the same orientation again later. And then I mark out where the biscuits need to go and get the slots cut. I'm using the largest number 20 size biscuits for this. Now, they're not really necessary, they just really help keep everything aligned during the glue up. Now I can get it all put back together and you can see how that triangle all lines up so I know I've got it all in the right place. Then I get some clamps on and leave it to dry. Now, I've done this for four different boards. So this project's been a little tricky because of how thick the material is. Normally I'd have glued this all up as big panels and then passed it through the table saw to cut these side pieces. Trouble is, all this is far too big and heavy for me to be able to handle pushing through the table saw. Uh, the other way I'd have done it is using the track saw, but this wood's too thick for the saw that I have. So I've glued it up into smaller panels the trouble with that is I now don't have nice straight sides so I've knocked up this little jig and now I can trim the sides on these smaller pieces flush one side using the jig the other side I can just run along the fence the bigger panels I'm just going to leave rough and then sand flush afterwards with all the bits trimmed down with the jig I can then give them a sand down and then I mark out where I want to drill some holes with the dowel joiner to join the four bits together. Now, it could be done in other ways. You could use a simple dowel jig or just use some screws and a plug cutter and then you can fill the holes afterwards hiding it all. But this is a tool I have, so I'm gonna use it. Of course, if you have a Festool Domino, probably use that instead. With all the holes drilled, I can get some glue applied and the dowels put into place. Now these are some nice big 12mm oak dowels, so they're going to be nice and strong. Unfortunately, the dowel joiner I have is not the most precise machine, so everything went together, but it just needed a bit of persuasion. So when I got the joints closed up most of the way, I can then get some clamps on to pull everything tight and leave the whole thing to dry. 
when the glue set clamps off and then I can give the whole thing a sand down. As I'd left the markings on the scaffold boards for that industrial look, I thought I'd also add my logo with my branding iron. Now I want to apply some finish and darken everything up, so I'm going to use some hard wax oil, and this is a dark oak colour. I get a coat on, then leave it for about 10 minutes, then come back and buff it off, removing any excess, and then it really lightens it up, and you can actually see the grain through it, and all the writing and my logo. So to really go with the industrial look, I found these great cast iron wheels. I get them positioned on the underside of the table, mark out how long the axle needs to be, and then I can use a hacksaw to get them cut down to length. The brackets get attached to the underside of the table with a few long screws. Then I can get the axles put back into place and the wheels put on. These little hubcaps then go on and then there's a grub screw just to lock them in place. So I want to add some more details to this and I've got these L-shaped flat brackets that I want to add to the corners. But these are shiny, they're zinc plated and I want to age them a bit. So first I've got to get this zinc coating taken off. So I'm going to soak them in a solution of citric acid. So I left these in the solution for about an hour, then I washed them off and gave them a dry. Now I want to age them some more, but this time by rusting them. So I'm going to knock up another solution, this time of some hydrogen peroxide, some vinegar and some salt. I'm then going to brush it on, leave it to work until I get to the desired level of patina I want then I can seal it with some spray-on lacquer. So doing it that way was a bit of a fun experiment, but I could have probably just stripped the zinc off and left them outside to rust, but this was much quicker. A bracket would go on each corner, and these are really just decorative, so I'm going to attach them with some nice brass screws. I use a self-centering drill bit to drill a pilot hole, as I really don't want to snap any of these screws off. I'll leave a link to the drill bits I use down below on the Tools I Use page. So that's it all done, and I think it's definitely got that kind of chunky industrial look. So that's it all done and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It's now on its way to its new home down in London. I'll put a link to this finish I used on the tools I use page down below with a lot of the other stuff I use. So thank you for watching. Thank you to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos.